Glyaries is a clade consisting of rodents and lagomorphs. The hypothesis that these form a monophyletic group has been long debated based on morphological evidence. Analysis supports gomphos as one of the earliest lagomorphs, more than rodents. It is likely that lagomorphs split off from the rest of the placental mammals around the cretaceous paleogene boundary. Prolagus is distinguished by a continuously growing dentition, a lack of a lower third molar, a trilobed second lower molar and unusually shaped premolars, with additional cusps in the lower third premolar. In comparison to modern picas of the genus Akatona, they have one less dorsal vertebra in the spinal column. Most species of Prolagus probably weighed around 500 grams, similar to a living pika. Plateau picas are considered to be a keystone species as they play a role in recycling nutrients in soil, providing food to predators such as foxes, weasels, falcons and owls. They also provide microhabitats by increasing plant richness and their burrows provides nests for small birds and reptiles. Since they live in such extremely cold environments and are a non-hibernating species, they have acquired physiological adaptations to better assist with their survival. These adaptations include their high resting metabolic rate and non-shivering thermogenesis along with the production of leptin which is a thermogenesis regulatory hormone. One important physiological adaptation is their ability to alter the type of their adipose tissue, from white to brown, which promotes non-shivering thermogenesis. Like rodents, picas have chisel-like incisor teeth but they also have a second pair of incisors in the upper jaw, followed by two molar teeth in the upper jaw and three molar teeth in the lower jaw. Picas have no canines. Their teeth grow throughout their life and they need to be worn down. Unlike other species of the family of picas, steppe pika is a nocturnal creature. It is normally heard but not seen. The males emit a long series of low trills and the females do also sing to attract males and respond to other females. It lives in a flock, dwelling systems of underground passages with several openings. Picas feed on soft parts of juicy plants and low shrubs, near its dens. At the end of the Miocene, the movement of tectonic plates caused the narrow connection between the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean to close, and over the next several hundred thousand years the Mediterranean dried up almost completely. Then the Strait of Gibraltar formed, re-establishing the connection with the Atlantic, and the Mediterranean refilled incredibly rapidly, possibly in as little as two years. As a result, various species that had colonized across the dried-out Mediterranean from the continental mainland were left stranded out on islands that had been reformed throughout the sea. Neuralagus was the evolutionary result, an enormous rabbit 50 centimeters tall. While having no predators, it would have been a slow-moving animal ambling around the scrublands of Menorca, digging for its main foods of roots and tubers. Very little is known of Anamite's striped rabbit ecology, nor why there is a thousand-mile gap between it and its nearest relative, the Sumatran striped rabbit. They may have survived in forested refugia that remained when glacial ice sheets retreated after the last ice age. Threats to the species are hunting, either by snare or less likely by dogs and habitat loss which makes it more vulnerable to hunters. The most significant threats are snares, and cultivation at lower altitudes and agriculture throughout and the least but increasing threats are extensive road building which opens undisturbed area to farmers and timber harvesters. Unlike many species of rabbits, the volcano rabbit emits very high-pitched sounds instead of thumping its feet on the ground to warn other rabbits of danger. It is crepuscular and is highly active during twilight, dawn, and all times in between. They are more abundant near tall, dense herbs and thick vegetation, and are adversely affected by anthropogenic environmental disturbances like logging and burning. 
A study on the effects of climate change upon volcano rabbit metapopulations concluded that fluctuations in climate most affected rabbits on the edge of their habitable range. The European rabbit is well known for digging networks of burrows, called warrens, where it spends most of its time when not feeding. Unlike the related hares, rabbits are altricial, the young being born blind and furless, in a fur-lined nest in the warren, and they are totally dependent upon their mothers. Territoriality and aggression contribute greatly to the rabbit's maturation process, and help ensure survival of the population. It is a gregarious animal, which lives in stable social groups centered around females sharing access to one or more burrow systems. Social structures tend to be looser in areas where burrow construction is relatively easy. It eats a wide variety of herbage, especially grasses. European hares are herbivores, primarily feeding on a diet of grasses and other vegetation. They are primarily crepuscular and nocturnal. This behavior helps them avoid predators. Unlike some social rabbits, they are generally solitary animals. They may come together for mating but usually lead solitary lives. European hares are known for their incredible speed and agility. They can run at speeds of up to 70 km per hour and are capable of making sharp, evasive turns. The hare has been hunted across Europe for centuries, with more than 5 million being shot each year. In Britain, it has traditionally been hunted by beagling and hare coursing, but these field sports are now illegal. Reaching a length around 60 cm and a weight 2 kg, the black-tailed jackrabbit is one of the largest North American hares. They occupy mixed shrub grassland terrains. Their breeding depends on the location, it typically peaks in spring, but may continue all year round in warm climates. Young are born fully furred with eyes open, they are well camouflaged and are mobile within minutes of birth, thus females do not protect or even stay with the young except during nursing. The black-tailed jackrabbit is an important prey species for many raptors and carnivorous mammals. Despite the name, spring hare is not a hare. They live throughout semi-arid areas in southern Africa, preferentially in sandy plains and pans with short grasses. In agricultural areas, they can be considered a pest due to their destructive feeding on crops. They are known for their unique method of locomotion. They move by hopping or jumping on their powerful hind legs, similar to kangaroos. This hopping motion allows them to cover long distances quickly. They are also skilled burrowers and use their strong forelimbs to dig extensive underground burrows. These burrows serve as shelter and provide protection from predators and extreme temperatures. Without direct scientific observation, lifestyle and diet of Cameron scaly tail are largely inferred from what is known of other anomalures and anecdotal information gathered by interviewing local people and subsistence trappers. The species is probably largely arboreal but occasional captures in ground snares indicates it sometimes comes to the ground. Other anomalures are largely or exclusively nocturnal and sleep in tree hollows during the day. Bathyergoides was a fairly large blesmal, and was already specialized for tooth digging with a skull very similar to modern forms. It had powerful muscular forelimbs that would have been used to push back loose soil while burrowing, but unlike its living relatives it also had a long tail and relatively slender hindlimb bones, with anatomy suggesting its legs were used more for stabilizing its posture than for actively digging. It may have had a less subterranean lifestyle than modern blesmals, 
digging out extensive burrows but still foraging for food above ground in a similar manner to modern semifossorial rodents like giant pouched rats. Naked mole rats are one of the few eusocial mammals, meaning they live in highly organized, caste-based social groups similar to ants and bees. These colonies are led by a single dominant breeding female known as the queen. The queen is the sole reproductive female, and she is responsible for giving birth to all the offspring. Other members of the colony, known as workers, are sterile and help with tasks such as foraging, tunnel excavation and caring for the queen's pups. They have a lifespan of up to 30 years, making them one of the longest-lived rodents in the world. They have a very low metabolic rate compared to other mammals of their size. This low metabolism helps them survive in environments with limited food resources. These rodents have a high tolerance for pain, and they are known to show little or no response to certain painful stimuli. They are also unable to regulate their body temperature internally. They rely on their underground burrows to maintain a stable environment. Old world porcupines are stout, heavily built animals, with blunt, rounded heads, fleshy, mobile snouts, and coats of thick cylindrical or flattened spines, which form the whole covering of their bodies, and are not intermingled with ordinary hairs. The habits of most species are strictly terrestrial. The various species are typically herbivorous, eating fruit, roots and bulbs. Some species also gnaw on dry bones, perhaps as a source of calcium. Like other rodents, they have powerful gnawing incisors and no canine teeth. Thick-spined porcupine are adaptable and can be found in various habitats, including forests, grasslands, and agricultural areas. They are known to inhabit both lowland and mountainous regions. They are generally solitary animals, and not much is known about their reproduction in the wild. In captivity, they have been observed to have a gestation period of around 90 days, and females give birth to one or two offspring at a time. When threatened, like other porcupines, a Sumatran porcupine will often raise its quills and may charge backward into the threat to impale the attacker. Their quills can be painful and difficult to remove once embedded in the skin of a predator. In some indigenous cultures, porcupines are hunted for their meat, quills and other body parts, which may have traditional uses. Brush-tailed porcupines live in small family groups of about eight members. Different family groups can share resources. When attacked by a predator, the porcupine raises its quills so it looks twice its size, rattles its tail quills, and stomps its feet. As with all porcupines, the brush-tailed porcupine backs into the attacker and inflicts damage with its quills. They live in forests, usually at high elevations, and are nocturnal sleeping in caves and burrows during the day. They are herbivorous, feeding on leaves, flowers and fruits which have fallen to the forest floor. Unlike most other porcupines, it has light, small quills. On the tail, these quills are thinner and brush-like. These can make noise when rattled. To save themselves from predators including larger mammals, snakes and birds, Long-tailed porcupine's tail can be lost when grabbed but will not be regenerated. Its broad paws allow them to be good climbers, hence they are able to climb trees and shrubs to search for food. They are primarily herbivores, with the main diets being leaves, wood, roots and cambium layer of trees, fruits, seeds and bamboo shoots. They also occasionally consume invertebrate insects. Tainotherium lived in Puerto Rico, and while it wasn't quite the largest of the giant hushas it was still enormous. It's only known from a single partial leg bone, so its full size is difficult to estimate, but it was probably somewhere around 80 centimeters tall at the shoulder. And that leg bone is especially unusual, 
showing anatomical adaptions associated with tree climbing. This is strange for such a huge heavy mammal, but it may have been an ecological equivalent of something like the giant Malagasy lemurs. Phoberomys was many times bigger than the largest rodent alive today, the capybara. It is speculated however that it may have been semi-aquatic like the capybara, although the water would have been a very dangerous place to be since giant crocodiles like Purosaurus are known to have lived in South America during the Miocene. Highland Tukotuko lives alone in an extensive burrow it digs. Soil is loosened with the forelimbs and pushed backwards by the hind limbs. There is usually a main passage with short side passages every few meters, one or more chambers for storing food and others for nesting. Most activity is in the morning with the animal expanding the tunnel to reach the roots and stems on which it feeds, and only emerging from the burrow briefly to gather nearby food before retreating again. The lowland paca is considered an agricultural pest for cassava, sugar cane, maize and other food crops. Its meat is highly prized. It is plentiful in protected habitats, and hence not in danger of extinction, but overall, its numbers have been much reduced because of hunting and habitat destruction. It is easily bred and raised in farms, although the taste is said to be inferior when farmed. It is a good swimmer and usually heads for the water to escape danger, as it can stay under water for several minutes. It also is a very good climber and it searches for fruit in the trees. The Dinomyidae are a family of South American rodents, the Dinomyids were once a very specious group, but now contains only a single living species, the Pacarana. Are thought to have occupied ecological niches associated with large grazing mammals due to their ability to compete with the native ungulates of South America. On the other side, they could feed on aquatic or swampy plants along the ancient rivers. The biggest known rodent of all time, Joseph Ortigasia, similar in size to a Sumatran rhinoceros, it stood about 1.5 meters tall at the chute and weighed around 900 kilograms its 30 centimeters long incisors could produce a large amount of bite force, and it may have used them in a similar manner to elephant tusks, rooting in the ground for food, stripping trees and branches, or defending itself from predators. Capybaras are excellent swimmers and are often found in or near bodies of water such as rivers, lakes, and marshes. They are even capable of staying submerged for several minutes. They are highly social animals and live in groups called harems. These groups typically consist of one dominant male, several females, and their offspring. They are herbivores and primarily feed on a diet of grasses and aquatic plants. They have special adaptations in their digestive system to efficiently extract nutrients from plant material. They are known to form unique interspecies bonds. They are often seen forming social bonds with a variety of other animals, including birds and smaller mammals, as they are generally non-aggressive. Capybaras do not sweat, which can make it challenging to regulate their body temperature. They often cool off by wallowing in water or mud. In some countries, they are kept as exotic pets. However, their care and maintenance can be quite challenging due to their unique needs, including access to water for swimming. Patagonian maras are highly social animals and are known for living in monogamous pairs or small family groups. They often form strong bonds with their mate. They communicate with a variety of vocalizations that help them maintain contact with other members of their group. They are territorial animals and mark their territory with scent markings and dung piles. These territories can be quite extensive, 
covering several acres they create complex underground burrows that provide protection from predators and temperature extremes. The burrows can have multiple entrances and chambers. In the wild, agudas are shy animals and flee from humans, while in captivity they may become trusting. They are renowned for being very fast runners, able to keep hunting dogs occupied with chasing them for hours. Their habitats include rainforests, savannas, and cultivated fields, depending on the species. They conceal themselves at night in hollow tree trunks or in burrows among roots. Active and graceful in their movements, their pace is either a kind of trot or a series of springs following one another so rapidly as to look like a gallop. They take readily to water, in which they swim well. Like other agudas, Central American agudas are diurnal and live in monogamous pairs. They mainly feed on fruits and seeds, and are important seed dispersers. They are regarded as one of the few species that can open Brazil nuts without tools, mainly thanks to their strength and exceptionally sharp teeth. They have no distinct breeding season, but females come into season twice a year and generally have one to four young. Bristle-spined rat is the only member of the genus Chietomys. It was officially described in 1818, but rarely sighted since, until December 1986, when two specimens were found in the vicinity of Valencia in Bahia. Their skulls are unusual in several ways. The eye socket is almost completely surrounded by a ring of bone. Incisors are distinctly narrow. Overall, the animal displays a mix of New World porcupine cranial characters, spiny rat cranial characters, and characters that set it apart from all other rodents. An arboreal species, Mexican hairy dwarf porcupine uses its prehensile tail to hold on to branches. It is nocturnal and is usually more active on dark nights. The day is spent in a hollow tree, concealed on a leafy branch or in highland areas, in a clump of bamboos. As it uses the same hiding place each day, a pile of droppings accumulates which produces a strong odor. This porcupine is covered with short yellowish spines but these are almost entirely obscured by the long black hair on the body. The snout is pink, broad and bulbous, and the eyes are small. This shy, nocturnal porcupine is solitary or lives in pairs in the branches of trees. During the day it rests in a cavity in a hollow tree or in a well-shaded area of the canopy, 6 to 10 meters above the ground. It rarely descends to the ground, but it shows little fear if it happens to be caught. It is not aggressive but will defend itself ferociously if attacked. This creature can easily be tamed enough to be kept in captivity. Intraspecific interactions consist of biting and attempts to injure adversaries with their sharp quills. Like its relatives, North American porcupines are known for their impressive quills. Contrary to a common misconception, they do not shoot or throw their quills at predators. Instead, when threatened, they raise their quills, which are loosely attached to their skin, and back into the attacker. The quills have barbs that make them difficult to remove. They are excellent climbers and are often found in trees, where they feed on leaves, twigs and bark. They have strong, grasping feet with sharp claws that help them climb. They are herbivores and have a diverse diet that includes a variety of plant materials, from tree bark to fruits and leaves. Their specialized digestive system allows them to efficiently extract nutrients from plant cellulose. They are slow-moving animals, both on the ground and in trees. This slow pace contributes to their vulnerability to predators.
The Bolivian chinchilla rat inhabit rocky, mountainous regions, often found at altitudes of 3,000 meters or more in the Andes Mountains. They are well adapted to life in these harsh, high-altitude environments. The long, bushy tail serves multiple purposes. It helps with balance, especially when they are leaping across rocks and cliffs, and it provides insulation in the cold, high-altitude environments where they live. They are social animals and are known to live in colony. Their teeth are specialized for gnawing on vegetation and are adapted to handle abrasive plant material. Chinchillas live in burrows or rock crevices in the Andes of northern Chile at elevations of about 300 to 1500 meters the climate in the wild chinchilla's native habitat is rather harsh, with daytime summer temperatures climbing up to 30 Celsius degrees in the shade and dropping to 7 degrees at night. As rodents, they are crepuscular animals, active during twilight hours. As herbivores, they are gregarious and prefer living in groups. Usually, males and females have a harmonious relationship with each other. They rarely fight in the breeding and mating season. Chinchillas are matriarchal animals. Plains Viscachas live in communal burrow systems in groups containing one or more males, several females, and immatures. Viscachas forage in groups at night and aggregate underground during the day. All members of a group use burrow throughout the communal burrow system and participate in digging at the burrows. Alarm calls are given primarily by adult males. The long-term social unit of the Plains Viscacha is the female group. Resident males disappear each year and new males join groups of females. White-faced spiny tree rats are primarily arboreal, they are adept climbers and are often seen foraging in trees for fruits, leaves and seeds. They play a role in seed dispersal in their habitat. They are nocturnal and his behavior helps them avoid diurnal predators. Like many species in the Echemes genus, they have spines and quills on their back. These spines and quills are stiff and provide some protection against predators. Yellow-crowned brush-tailed rats are also arboreal, spending much of their time in trees and dense vegetation. They are agile climbers and use their long, prehensile tails for balance. The prehensile tail is a specialized adaptation that allows them to grasp branches and navigate through the forest canopy. They are generally solitary animals and are not known to be highly social. They may have overlapping home ranges with members of the same species. Nutrias are herbivores and primarily feed on aquatic plants. Their strong, continuously growing incisor teeth require constant gnawing to keep them from overgrowing. Nutrias' feeding habits can have significant impacts on the vegetation in their habitats. They have become invasive in many regions where they were introduced. They are known to cause ecological damage by overgrazing aquatic vegetation and altering wetland habitats. They were originally introduced to regions outside South America for their fur, which is dense and waterproof. While the fur industry has declined, nutrias still have economic value for their meat and hide in some regions. Nutrias have a unique tail that is scaly and round, often likened to the tail of a beaver. They use their tails for balance while swimming and as a tool for communication, slapping it against the water's surface to alert other nutrias to potential threats. Captive Hispaniolan hyushas have been observed to be nocturnal and arboreal, and to use nest boxes placed high off the ground. Wild specimens are reported to be active only at night, they hide during the day, feed mainly on roots and fruits, and live in male-female pairs. Reports also stated that three or four individuals commonly occupy the same burrow system. They inhabit both dry and moist forests on the island. It is reported that they occupy rough hillsides and ravines from sea level to 2,000 meters in elevation. 
it is endangered from habitat loss and introduced species, such as rats or mongoose. The prehensile-tailed hyusha is a small, furry, rat-like mammal found only in forests on Cuba. It is the only member of the genus Misateles. It climbs and lives in trees where it eats only leaves, and it is threatened by habitat loss. The prehensile-tailed hyusha is a member of the hyusha subfamily, a group of rodents native to the Caribbean that are mostly endangered or extinct. Damaris hyushas normally live in pairs, but can be found individually or in small groups. They are diurnal and do not burrow, so during the night they rest in hollows in rocks or trees. They are omnivorous but eat mostly bark, leaves and fruit. Occasionally they will take small vertebrates such as lizards. Both males and females scent mark their territory with urine. Hyushas were traditionally hunted for food in Cuba as their flesh was agreeable and their size meant they provided a substantial meal. The Wild Animals Protection Act of 1968 made it illegal to hunt or kill hyushas without a permit. The Chilean rock rat is a semi-fossorial species and constructs a network of shallow tunnels and runways with entrances every meter or so. It seems to be a colonial species and feeds on roots and seeds, apparently specializing on the roots and seeds of Araucaria in Chile. It is mainly active by night but sometimes also by day. It stores food for use in winter when it is active, moving about under the snow. Degus are highly social animals and are often found in groups called colonies. They communicate through a combination of vocalizations, body language and scent marking. They have ever-growing incisor teeth that continuously grow throughout their lives. Like chinchillas, degus enjoy taking dust baths. They roll in fine dust or sand to help keep their fur clean and maintain their skin health. They have become popular as pets due to their social nature and endearing personalities. They are known for forming strong bonds with their human caregivers.